Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Mole Trap here coming at you with game two of this best of three series between Idra, Idra and Straylock. Wait, we gotta do this again. Oh, crap, did I hit the wrong key? Up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. I'm totally botching it. What is going on here? Why do I not have the control ones? Alright, that's just weird. Okay, well, apparently this doesn't work anymore. That's that's very strange. <laughs> Alright, anyway, this is gonna be Straylock versus Intra. I have no idea what happened just there. It, for some reason, in, in the last game, I was like, alright, sweet, there's these awesome new patch 1.3 things going on, and in this game, they're just deciding not to work, so whatevs. In any case... This is game two of Straylock versus Idra. Idra's gonna be the green Zerg, of course. Straylock, the blue Terran in the top right-hand corner here. And this is going to be another one of the new maps, Taldorim Altar. I played a, a friend of mine, I was playing with a friend of mine the other day and I was like, hey, let's play on one of these new maps that are bigger, just playing versus some comps. And uh, he's like, what are all these green things? Cause he's new to the game. And so these Zelnaga watchtowers are like these crazy new things that he didn't know about and I was telling him about the high yield minerals and mules and stuff like that and so he's like what are all these hexagons these green hexagons mean and I'm like uh they're just decorations they're not that cool after all actually so in any case this is Taldorim altar with the big altar in the middle very very cool looking these new maps are just very cool looking in general I like them a lot I cannot wait to cast some games on dual site that game is, I mean, that map is fat. And whoa, Straylock. Whoa, fast command center. No barracks, no nothing. He's just going straight for a CC. And this is the map to do it. You've got this choke you can wall in that protects that base. But Hydra, if he decides to put some pressure on, he could easily do so. His pool, unfortunately, is late. If he'd gone for an uh, earlier pool, he probably would just basically bust out and own... Straylock, I don't think he'd be able to get up enough defenses in time. Well, he might be able to, I guess, if he can get a good wall going. If he's probably going to put a couple more barracks down at that uh, after that. The Overlord is going to spot this, though. Actually, whoop, let's see. Yeah, see the little vision trick thingy is, is already working. Let's see what this over this Overlord doesn't even realize that he's in Straylock's base right now. So the drone is still going down here to the side. So that's kind of interesting. And he's, what's he going to do? I'm just curious where he's going to fly this Overlord right now. I guess he's going to peek up and see if he can catch the edge of the command center right now. That's kind of interesting. In any case, Straylock, he's built his barracks over here. He's building a, a marine now. And he's got his second command center up. He's going to immediately morph it into an orbital command. Idra does see this orbital now. He does see this wall over here. But, again, does not know about that expansion. So, that is very, very interesting that he doesn't know about that. And he might change things. I like the position of his barracks. He can actually put the tech lab behind off to the side and it's kind of nestled in this little nook next to the tree and now he's going to put down his wall a couple more barracks going down very very smooth opening by Strelok. the warship uh wow this drone is finally going to come in here and scout again I, he still doesn't know that expansion is there he might suspect it although he might have thought it was a one racks into command center instead of the command center first so Strelok's going to have a huge economy. Look at this. He's got tw only 22 harvesters at the moment. Reaper is being produced right now. SCV is going to try and run in here and see what he can see. He sees several Zerglings, and it's just going to quit and not even get a chance to run into the main. Although I don't think it would have gotten very far either with this queen over here. Not a lot to see at the moment in Idra's base regardless. But, yeah, with those double command centers early on, Strelok's going to be able to start producing lots and lots and lots of SCVs. We can see he's producing double SCVs. He's going to be able to drop double mules as well. And there's that Reaper running out, chasing off some Zerglings. Something I would really like to change if I could change one thing. Well, actually, yeah, there's lots of things I would change differently. But something I would like to change is when you're following a unit, it's, it like falls behind it, literally. And you can't see like what it's running into. In any case, Reaper's going to run in. And, oh, he's just going to let him run right by. He knew that Reaper was there. Speedlings are, Zerglings are catching up, though. Is he going to get in here? He does spot the Baneling Nest. Does spot that Baneling Nest. And it appears Hydra might be going for a Baneling Bust. After, well, never mind. He's getting his lair. So it's not really like an all-in Baneling Bust. But here's the thing. Straylock doesn't have much. He doesn't have much. And Hydra is peeking in to see what he can find in the main base. He's going to lose that Overlord, unfortunately. 
did not get to see this factory with the reactor on it and the starport going down. Uh, which would, wouldn't make too much of a difference, but it would make some difference to know what was going on there. Here's some Zerglings running in. He's going to prod the front. Now, if he wants to, he could make a ton of Banelings and just bust, and it, he's not going to. He's producing drones, so never mind. I think that... I, I was thinking that might have been what the Baneling Nest was for when he realized that that wall was... Uh, it's, he spent a lot of money on that wall, basically, and I don't know. Anyway, Stim is being researched. Man, Stim takes almost three minutes to research in patch 1.3. It is ridiculous. I guess Stim is just overpowered, apparently, and it's because they needed to make it so it took even longer to get Stim. There were some Stim timings that I guess were too powerful, according to Blizzard. I don't. I, we never saw those having too much of an effect at the very top pro level, and that supply depot is... Whoa, it's like on a little ridge poking up, so it's like showing the side of it up i am just getting uh, totally amused by the little things today little things like the name thing that comes up that didn't actually come up and uh and things like the apm and all that anyway maybe my control key isn't no no it's not even listed anyway anyway he's gonna actually load up a drop here overlord spots it and meets its doom as a result idra does is getting his third base up over here interesting he's getting that position instead of this position it's a little, actually in a way it's a little bit more defensible just because it's behind. And so if he does decide to go around here, it will be easier to flank Strelok at that point. And he is going to come up here for a little bit of an attack. There's a single spine crawler. There's some Banelings and Zerglings in the mix. They, he has stimmed those Marines though. If he can get it, uh, just land a, one or two Banelings on those Marines. He can do it. He's going to try and surround with the Zerglings to slow him down. Baneling does land on a couple Marines. Wow, actually, and lands on a lot of Marines and wipes the floor with those. The Mutalus coming in as well, and he's going to lose those Metamax as well if he's not careful, which he's not. And, yeah, loses both Metamax as well, which he was producing out of that reactor and starport that we saw earlier uh, being produced. Wow, so Strelok in a little bit of trouble. He's now pinned in his base, basically, and there are Mutalus, uh, even more Mutalus being produced. Another hatchery is being produced, a little macro hatch there. Uh, <laughs> I was playing with the same friend that I mentioned earlier, the nub friend. I was playing with him and Diggity, again versus some comps, and Diggity said, I'm going to get a macro hatch. And my friend was like, uh, what is that parlance that you speak? What, what, what does that mean? So I'd explain it to him. For those of you that don't know, it's a hatchery that you produce not to get an extra base, but just to have the extra production capabilities of another hatchery. So it's a macro hatch for you. By the way, apparently there was some... Some, uh contention on my description of how to do magic box the other people were talking about how you don't need to go way across the map which i had indicated you need to click right click your mutalisks far far away on the mini map apparently people think you could well apparently you can click them just past the thors i personally think it's better to click far away because they do clump up a little bit if you click them near the thor and it's it's hard to click them you know that close to the thor it is also sometimes good to hold position them above the Thor, but it depends on the situation as far as where they are, where you can stop them. So anyway, just a little update on my previous description of magic boxing there. He's got a lot of Milos, he's got a lot of Banelings and such. Up here at the top of this ramp, Straylock, I don't know if he even knows, he doesn't know about that actually, actually extra base down in the bottom left there. So it may have been that Idra was trying to hide it as well. Moving his units around, uh, well, he's getting his extractor shelled here. Evo Chamber getting shelled as well. This could be bad. He's got plus one melee attack being researched there. He's going to try and come in for a flank here. Mutalisks maybe coming in the back. He's going to try and pick off some Mutalisks. No, I don't think he was expecting those Marines to be a little bit farther back. Here he comes in. He, is, uh, he realizes he's got enough Mutas to deal with that. The Evo Chamber is gone, though, already, so the distraction was not quite worth it. Here he comes in. He's going to come in. With Zerglings from all sides, Banelings as well. He needs to pull those Banelings back and let the Mutas and Zerglings clean up the tanks. And yeah, he just needed to bring those Banelings back up here or something like that. So loses a few few Banelings. He didn't actually need to. But Straylock, in the meantime, just building up, macroing up here. Just building lots of Marines and tanks, getting his upgrades going. And he has, does have a plus one infantry armor upgrading right now, so... Idra losing that evil chamber, not the best thing. Kind of an interesting place for it, actually. Sometimes you just build it because you're like, 
All right, I just need to build a building somewhere real quick and you just pull a drone off wherever you happen to be looking at that time. He's actually rebuilding it in the same spot, so there must be some purpose to it. Possibly to even shield that hatchery. You know, soak up hit points so that the hatchery does not take hit points from when the tanks are sieging up on the low ground, that kind of thing. Here he comes in. He's got running with Zerglings from one side, Mutas from the other. He might be able to clean this up. He's taken some significant damage to his Mutas, but he does have enough to just clean up those Marines. And he's going to be able to polish off those tanks, and he's going to get the medevac. Oh, medevac gets hit by a last-second glaive worm, bouncing off the tank. Gets picked off as well. Straylock is not done yet, though. He's got another force he's ready to move out with. Just a single tank, though. And really, I think he should probably just chill, defend, get a third base, and just mac her up a little more. Because with only one siege tank, you can't really do a lot. You need, you need uh, several siege tanks to really hold off... Mass banelings and what have you, especially with a player like Idra who can creep the map up very well. In any case, here comes some more Mutalists coming in. He's going to try and pick off that turret. You can see him shift-clicking away from it. Oh, but he gets caught by some Marines. Takes some, some damage he didn't need to, but these Marines, again, losing a lot of hit points just from the stim. Medivac, brand new Medivac, doesn't have a ton of energy left. Doesn't have a ton of energy, period. So that stim is going to use up a lot of it. Looks like he's going to be able to just barely heal up all the... And sorry about that hiccup that probably just happened. I, uh, my <laughs> brand new awesome hard drive just ran out of space since I'm recording huge files right now. So I'm just going to jump back into this and watch as this giant muta ball comes in here. Takes a little bit of damage from these Marines, but they are starting to be able to pop turrets pretty quickly. I don't remember if I'd already said this actually. I think I said it and I'm not sure if it got recorded that I just did a test the other day and I believe it takes something like 26 Mutalists or something exactly to, to one-shot turrets. Uh, in any case, so, Idra has a large ball of Mutas here. He's doing a pretty good job. I believe that Strelok is probably going to have to start thinking about getting some Thors and there is, a fa in fact, a Thor on the way. Idra's darting around his Mutalists and we do have a drop actually coming over around the side here. I'm not sure exactly where he's unloading here. A little bit of a strange location for that. Maybe he's worried about those Mutalists picking him off because he doesn't know where they are. But he's going to know in a moment where they are as they come back in to do another assault. Picking off that turret. See it took two volleys because he only has 22 Mutalists. And there's that drop coming in here picking off brand new expansion. He does cancel the expansion actually. So he was able to save that and he's actually just going to pick up and go away and are these mutas going to be able to come back and deal with that drop? He's going to withdraw completely so these mutalists are not going to be able to intercept. But uh, yeah, if we look at the unit tab, 28 mutalists now. He's starting to get a huge, 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 huge muta ball. There is a Thor on the field though. So if he does clump up his troops in order to get that muta ball in there to, to, to kill something off in one shot, it's not going to be pretty. Look at these mutalists hunting hunting searching for this drop up here which is just chilling hoping he can catch it off guard he does not want to get caught over here in this expansion this expansion on the side which was just spotted by his trail like he doesn't want to get that caught and and picked off because he doesn't have too much defense and this this kind of a drop that that many marines stimmed could easily take that hatchery very quickly that is a ton of medalists he's going in for a major attack tons and tons of medalists he's gonna one shot that those two turrets well, they're kind of not clumped up, so they didn't really one-shot it. He's going to engage the reason. He needs to get out of town, though. Needs to leave. There he does get out before this giant ball of Marines comes in and wipes the floor of him. He does have twice as many Marines as Mutalus. And Idra, again, taking this expansion in a strange location instead of this one. Trying to hide it, perhaps, as he tried to hide this one over here, although it has been spotted now by by Strelok, and Strelok is going to be able to, is, is going to head his drop down there, that drop that was kind of ill-fated before, oh, is he going to pick off that reactor, the reactor does survive, it could be repaired at this point, but his production facilities are a good place to go, but he's now moving down the map, Idra coming in from all sides, with Banelings coming from one side, targeting those Marines, Mulus coming in to engage the other, he's, he's, he kills off the Thor, he's trying to engage the Mulus, now on to just the Marines, he may not have enough, to deal with it and no the Mutalists suicide onto the Marines and it just was not enough and Idra despite the fact it's so sad that and oh he was losing a base down here mined out here almost mined out here almost mined out his main and with no expansion here 
this expansion about to go down. Idra, even though it looks like he's in pretty good shape, he's got a lot of drones, 74 drones, really good income. He was pretty much on the verge of loss there since he just lost his entire army. Uh, he could have sent some Zerglings in there. No, not against those Marines. Again, Straylock had the upgrade advantage this entire game. So, yeah. In any case, hope you guys enjoyed that series. Uh, Idra losing the second game goes knocked down to the loser's bracket. So he still has a chance of coming back. Again, FX Open Esports is the Justin TV. I actually come to think that I'm probably not going to be able to get these VODs up just because my internet has been so stupid. It took me like three or four tries to upload my last video. And uh, so I don't know if this VOD's going to get up before you guys are, before that event has already happened. So, in any case, hope you guys enjoyed the series regardless. And take care. Thanks very much for watching. I'm going to go ahead and go try and get some sleep. I have to wake up for work in about five hours. And, uh, but I, I should have gone to sleep way earlier, but with this video card being so awesome, not video card, with this hard drive being so awesome, letting me record much higher quality games, I was like, I couldn't resist casting some more games. Plus, some random awesome top level players randomly popped up on some replay sites, so that was cool too. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching. GG, and take care.